one of the things that we've talked about just briefly, but uh, I want to address a little bit more is Alzheimer's disease. Uh, it's affecting so many people and families right now. It doesn't seem to be a, a firm grasp on why it's happening, much less being able to uh, address the issue uh, after the diagnosis. What, what do we know about it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's exactly the same thing as autism. It has a lot of parallels. Uh, it's just manifested differently in the elderly um, because of the different stage of brain development. But it has a lot of the same features. It has the um, excess oxidation damage. Uh, of course, it has this amyloid beta plaque as well, which... Um, I have some theories about that, too, that are quite uh, novel, I suppose. Um, but the, um, because the plaque is a consequence of the disruption of the uh, supply of cholesterol. In, my, in fact, I wrote a paper with some colleagues on that, on that idea. that it's, uh, The amyloid beta actually is kind of trying to substitute for the cholesterol that's not there, so that there's a cholesterol deficiency problem with Alzheimer's. Cholesterol is so important for neuron uh, synapse transport, and it's, it's very important in the... In the in the uh, shell, shell of all the cells in their, in their um, membrane. They need cholesterol, and they need cholesterol critically at those places where, where they're involved with transport of nutrients and electrical supply and all of this stuff that neurons really depend on. And so the neurotransmission is also in trouble if there's not enough cholesterol. The, the, uh, the axons need the cholesterol to be um, protected from leakage of the signal as it's traveling through the axon. And so, um, so the cholesterol deficiency is partly due to the cholesterol sulfate deficiency as well because cholesterol sulfate is a way to deliver cholesterol that if you don't have enough of it, then you've got to deliver cholesterol through a different mechanism because um, it, which is harder, you know. So there's um, cholesterol deficiency then is, is part of the issue there. And, um, and again, the manganese problem. So the manganese problem applies to both autism and uh, Alzheimer's because you have those, uh, these are the mitochondrial disorder, which is connected to both of those conditions, is going to be due to the lack of manganese to detoxify. So the mitochondria get damaged by their own activities because you don't have this ability to um, squelch the, um, the electrons that are being produced. And um, aconitase is another one. It's an enzyme in that mitochondrial cycle that gets clobbered. It's, it's one of the first things to go when you've got this oxidative damage. And then that, that first stage of the mitochondrial system doesn't work. And actually it's interesting because you need then to, you can't ma manage glucose anymore. You have to kind of substitute glutamate for glucose. So glutamate becomes your source of energy rather than just using it as a neurotransmitter. But of course that's really tricky because it has this neurotoxic reaction. It's very difficult. But you can burn the glutamate for fuel and bypass the iconotase, which isn't working because it's been exposed to the superoxide. So there's all these ways that the body can kind of work around sure. these problems, but they're not good solutions. Mm -hmm. So you need to start burning all these things other than sugar. Once you get, you get basically like a type 3 diabetes in, auto, in uh, Alzheimer's, we talked about that in the paper, where um, the brain is unable to, to handle sugar. It can't burn sugar as a fuel. And again, that could be connected to that iconotase problem, which is due to the manganese deficiency. And um, so then you have alternative fuels. And of course, people think uh, that neurons can only process sugar. And it's true that they cannot use fat for fuel, uh, which is one of the arguments people can use to say you've got to eat carbohydrates, you know, because you need to have sugar to fuel the brain. But they, neurons can use ketone bodies, which are derived from fats. And they can use lactate uh, as a fuel, which is derived from sugar. And they can use um, alcohol as a fuel. So these are all alternative, and glutamate I mentioned. So these are all alternative fuels that the brain could use um, instead of glucose, which would be a good thing to do if you've got this issue with these damaged mitochondria. So, um, so then it becomes really attractive to eat a very high fat diet if you've already got Alzheimer's to avoid sugar in your diet because you can fuel the brain with these alternative fuels that can bypass that stage of the mitochondria that's busted, mm -hmm. which uh, if you make that work, it's going to cause more damage to your brain. So I think that's one of the reasons why these high-fat high, high fat diets are effective for um, Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. But you really need to be eating a very nutrient-dense diet to, um, to, to try to repair Alzheimer's. Because again, all these minerals, and I mentioned manganese, but iron is messed up, manganese is messed up, um, zinc, you know, uh, molybdenum, all these minerals are messed up by glyphosate. 
And um, so it's a sort of massive, it's not just a mineral deficiency problem, it's a mineral, uh, the minerals are, are, are not going distributed correctly over the body. So you can actually end up with both toxicity and deficiency at the same time for all of these minerals. And certainly that's an issue with iron. Iron is also a factor in Alzheimer's. Iron can be toxic if it's free iron. And the body has all these mechanisms to protect you from that. Like heme, for example. Heme is a molecule that's built around the iron, sequestering it inside the heme molecule so that it will be, um, won't react uh, in places where you don't want it to react. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, it also carries oxygen. That's what the uh, hemoglobin sure. in the red blood cells carries oxygen through the heme. Um, and that's a very effective way to carry both iron and oxygen safely. So it's always about how to make it safe. Well, it turns out glyphosate disrupts the first step in making heme. So, um, and this is really remarkable because then that's just going to mean that you're going to have trouble transporting iron. And that's, of course, going to mess up the red blood cells too, so you get into anemia issues. And anemia is connected to these uh, brain diseases as well. So, I mean, it's just like an incredibly yeah. complicated cascade of all these things. <laughs> But, um, but to treat Alz Alzheimer's, the way I would treat it is the way I would do, uh, advise anybody to, to do stuff, which is to uh, organic diet, whole foods diet, uh, rich in seafood and uh, meats and uh, vegetables, green vegetables, you know, cruciferous vegetables, onions, garlic, all these spices, curcumin, you know, um, resveratrol, so drinking wine, um, so getting various flavonoids and um, uh, polyphenols, those things can help you transport sulfate. And, um, and getting sulfur, of course, sulfur-rich foods like garlic and onions and, and all the seafood. Um, iodine is probably an issue as well. I mean, selenium is an issue. So all these different uh, nutrients are deficient. And, and it just takes one to really mess you sure. up. If just one of them is deficient, it really messes you up. But when you say all of them are deficient, so just eating this really nutrient-rich diet, organic, mm. highest quality food you can find, spend your money on food rather than on drugs. Right. Get out in the sun, and especially getting sun exposure to the eyes, really, really important. But it could actually be destructive if your systems aren't working. So the really tricky thing is that, and this is really interesting. This is one I just only recently figured out, tryptophan. Again, tryptophan. So tryptophan is really important. That's the product of the shikimate pathway. And it's a precursor, as I mentioned, to melatonin, melanin, serotonin. These are all really important molecules. Um, tryptophan, so when the tryptophan is exposed to sunlight, it actually absorbs UV light and turns it into blue light, which is really fantastic because blue light is the light that Enos make, needs to make sulfate. So, so they work together as a team. The tryptophan converts the UV light to blue. The Enos turns the blue into green, releases these electrons that allow you to oxidize oxygen and make the sulfate. It's a beautiful system. Mm. But it won't work well if there's not enough tryptophan because then the UV is going to be toxic. You're going to end up with, with cancer. And you won't have enough blue light, you know? Mm. <laughs> so. Uh, so then you've got to worry if you don't have enough tryptophan. So you need to eat foods that are rich in tryptophan, which is, again, going back to the seafoods um, and the meats. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you need to stare at the blue sky. So I, if, I were, if I had Alzheimer's, I would sit outside staring at the blue sky all day long because blue, you know, blue light goes into the pineal gland. And if it's got any, the pineal gland is probably pretty destroyed, but if it's got any ability to work at all, it can make sulfate out of the blue light. Uh, from staring at the blue sky. So that'd be my really uh, unusual sort of <laughs> biggest recommendation for Alzheimer's. I would also recommend soaking in Epsom salt baths because that's sulfate, uh, that's magnesium sulfate. You can absorb the sulfate through the skin and that really gets you, gets you sulfate without you having to make it. You know, you have it already ready made, passing, bypassing the gut because the gut can have all kinds of issues with getting sulfate in. So I think that um, soaking in uh, you know, ideally going to a sulfur hot springs, you know, <laughs> natural sulfur soaking bath and staring at the blue sky. So get into the hot springs outdoors, look at the blue sky, stay there all day long. <laughs> if you've got Alzheimer's, that might be a good place to start. Sure.